Coach Stefanski and Andrew Berry have both talked about a shared responsibility. Are, are players able to have those conversations right now, JC? Are those happening at this point about social behaviors once you leave the facility? Yeah, I, I think, um, again, those conversations are going to have to happen uh, all throughout the year. It's going to be a constant reminder. Um, I know a lot of guys talk about young guys making the right decisions, but we all have our routines uh, that we've done, and, and that's old guys, too, of, of going places and, and doing certain things on the days off. So everybody needs to be really cognizant of making the right decisions. Thank you, Mr. President. Great. Mary Kay Cabot, you have our next question. Hey, JC, I'm just wondering, uh, now that you guys are into the, uh, the multiple testing process for, you know, for almost a couple of weeks here, how, how do you think, uh, you know, how do you feel about handling, you know, a guy like, um, you know, a guy like Jamie Gillen or, or Garrett Gilbert that, you know, all of a sudden they're having like a surprise positive test, or maybe even the case of a Matthew Stafford where uh, he had what the Lions said yesterday was a false positive you know, and his wife is upset about that and the impact that it's had on their family. Uh, how, how are you guys, now that you're into it, managing sort of maybe like a false positive situation? Yeah, I, I'm not going to speak about individual cases just for their own privacy. Um, but just in general, I think the protocols are, are working. Uh, and, and that's why we have the, the testing protocols in place to make sure we, we find out what's going on and we have, you know, the consecutive tests to make sure we know, you know, what's a, what's a positive test, what's a false positive test. Um, and, and they're working as far. And, that, and that's why I'd, I'd go back to say that that's the importance of, of continued daily testing. Uh, it's the best way to figure out what's going on and making sure we have, uh, you know, the right decisions being made. Will you change anything uh, in terms of the protocol? Now that you're seeing how how it is working, do you need to tweak it at all? No, I, I don't think. Uh, I think the protocols are working already. Now the protocols aren't set in stone. Uh, those will continue to evolve as you know the information on the virus evolves and as the CDC guidelines evolve. Um, but nothing's happened where where I think we need to make a change of of how we're doing it right now. Thank you. Our next question is from Daryl Ryder. Daryl. Hey, JC, obviously we're, we're not in the building, so we only know what we've been told about some of the changes and adjustments that have been made. Um, what are, Kevin Stefanski talked about the team has gone above and beyond what the actual requirements are. So I'm just kind of curious, maybe if you could peel the curtain back a little bit for us and maybe explain some of those things that the Browns specifically have been done uh, or have done to go above and beyond to, to make you players feel uh, and be safe. Yeah, no, the, the Browns have done a, a really great job uh, walking through the facility. It, it's like a new building. Um, the, the weight room is, is no longer where, where it originally was. That weight room's turned into a second locker room for us. Um, that way we have the ability to spread out and make sure we, we can continue social distancing even in the locker room. Um, the weight room's now out in the field house. Uh, the upstairs where um, the, the staff was, uh, new walls have been put up. It's been completely rebuilt. Um, to add additional meeting rooms to allow social distancing and meetings. Um, they, they've done everything you could possibly think of, you know, walking through there, there's, there's nothing I can look at and think, well, maybe they could have did this. Um, th they've done a great job. Thank you. Our next question is from Dan Lobby. Hey, JC. Um, we all saw that, that tweet storm a couple Sundays ago from players as, as you guys were working through that agreement. Um, do you think players fully understand uh, kind of the type of power they have in, in situations like this? And is that one of your goals as union president is to, to kind of help players understand that, that player empowerment uh, side of things? Yeah, I think, I think guys are starting to understand that both uh, for football issues as well as societal issues is they have this platform um, and they can use that to create change. And um, I, I thought it was a really great thing to see uh, so many kind of faces of, of the NFL um, step forward um, and, and take a stand for their teammates and for their teammates' families and for their families uh, and demand, you know, the, the safety that they, they want. Uh, and, and it led to uh, immediate concessions. Uh, and, and that's the power the players have. Um, it, it was really great to see. And, and I'm, I was you know, excited to, uh, to watch that. Are, are you able to kind of give us an idea of how that all came together? Uh, yeah, that was that was player driven. So um, obviously we 
throughout this entire process, we were really engaged with the players. Obviously, we talked to the executive committee, uh, the board of player reps, and then we were having uh, league-wide calls where anybody could could get on and, and ask questions and, and make sure they were informed. Um, and everybody was extremely passionate about this issue because it, it involves player safety and, and the safety of themselves and the safety of their families. Uh, and guys wanted to make sure if they were going to go back to an environment, this would be as safe of an environment as possible. So um, the guys got together and, and said they, they still feel like there's, there's more they need to feel comfortable. Um, and, and they, they organized, um, you know, making sure that, that people heard their voice. Thanks. Nate Ulrich, you're up. Hey, JC, um, I want to congratulate you on, um, you know, announcing that you and your wife are expecting. Um, and it also leads me to, uh, you know, kind of a personal question about your decision that you, you talked about to play. Was that something you had to wrestle with? Um, obviously, I'm sure that was on your mind as you decided. Yeah, so um, uh, I definitely consulted medical experts. Uh, I'm I'm staying at the hotel right now. Um, just want to make sure everything's running properly and um, there's no outbreak. So I'll, I'll stay here until I feel comfortable going back um, to to my house. Um, but no, that that's definitely part of it. And again, that's why you know when the, the first question about when you know do, do you consider opting out. Uh, I think everybody has their own unique circumstances and, and need to kind of sort through the information and gather more information and then just make the best decision uh, that they feel most comfortable with. Great. Our next question is from Jeff Shadell. Jeff, you can unmute on your side, please. Hey, see, this is, I have two questions. One, what is it like being the president of the union and trying to get your football, you know, be a football player? Because I'm sure being a president at this time is, is more difficult with the COVID and all. And a second question is, as president, do you feel responsibility to make sure the guys do uh, behave off the field? Uh, to the first one, uh, I think where I'm at in my career, I've reached a point where I, I have a pretty good grasp of what it takes to get ready. Um, so I, I think um, I know what I need to do you know, throughout the week, throughout the off season to prepare and, and have my body ready and have my mind ready to play. Um, so the, the added responsibilities don't, don't cause me too much concern. Um, the second question uh, was about uh, the players. I think my main goal is protecting the players. And I think that's when you take on this job, that's your responsibility is, is you're protecting all the players within the league. And when, when you take on the job as your player rep for your team, your job is protect all the guys in, in your locker room. Uh, when, when you take on the, the presidency, your job is to protect the players in all locker rooms. Uh, and that's, you know, being there, making sure we put in the right uh, protocols to keep them safe uh, and monitoring to make sure everything's going right. And, and again, this uh, everybody involved in this situation has to make the right decisions. I know it's always going to be talked about, are the players making the right decisions? Um, but the coaches have to make the right decisions. The staff have to make the right decisions. The executives have to make the right decisions. Everybody who walks in that building, uh, if they make wrong decisions outside the facility, it impacts the people in that building and their families uh, who they go home to. So everybody involved has to make the right decisions. Next question is from Tony Grossi. Uh, JC, uh, first of all, congratulations on your the work you're doing. It's It's been exemplary. Picked a hell of a year to run for president. Uh, any regrets? I mean, you didn't see this coming when the election was. And also, it just struck me that if the president of the union had opted out, it would have sent quite a chilling uh, effect, I think, on, on the rest of the players. How much did that weigh on your decision? Um, I, I appreciate it. Um, for the second question, again, I don't, I don't think um, I look at it like that. I think each person has to make their own um, individual decision. Um, and, and each, again, each person's scenario is in, in life is different. Um, and, and we just wanted to provide them options uh, to make that right decision, provide avenues to, to find what's best for them. Uh, I de definitely don't regret running for president. I've really enjoyed uh, the work. It's something I've, I've been passionate about for a long time. It's something I went to school for. Um, so it's something I've always been interested in. Uh, obviously, it's been a, a busy, a busy off season, uh, but it's been a really great time 
kind of fighting for the players and, and trying to provide them uh, as best of a workplace as possible. Thanks. Jake Trotter, you have our next question. Yeah, hey, JC. Uh, are there lessons to be learned from uh, the developments we've seen with baseball so far in terms of navigating through a season, you know, quote unquote, outside of a, of a bubble? And is that something that you're following closely, even though, as you said, you're very busy between being the Brown Center and NFLPA president? Yeah, no, we, um, we're in pretty constant contact with the other sports leagues um, and, and just trying to understand what each, each group's going through. Um, I think the, the main thing I'll harp on again is, is the idea of continuing daily testing. I think the lag time in testing uh, was a big effect on what's going on with baseball. Um, now, our, our sport's different, just the amount of traveling they do um, and the amount of kind of moving the bubble of going from hotel to hotel is, is difficult, where we'll be in our, in our location most of the time. Uh, and that was the goal of, of moving guys away from having a training camp in one place and, and then coming back to their original place midway through training camp or doing joint practices or preseason games. You don't want to move that bubble uh, more than you have to. Um, but, but I think the, the main one is, is watching what's going on with baseball is, is trying to um, continue daily testing and continue um, to have that as an asset for us and not having a lag time in testing, with, which causes these outbreaks. Because when, when, someone, um, when someone's sick and shedding virus in the building, it, it sweeps through that place quickly. Uh, it's extremely contagious. Uh, and you want to make sure that the people in the building aren't sick. We'll go to Scott Petrick. Um, JC, you brought it up a couple times, the daily testing. Isn't it supposed to go to every other day after a couple of weeks? So is that something you're trying to change? Yeah, so it's supposed to, the first two weeks will be daily. And then after that, it goes to every other day. Um, that is, there's there's a kind of a, a, an added rule there that it will be measured uh, on positivity rates. So there are some teams based off the positivity rate we've already had. Uh, we already know that they will continue on a team by team basis with individual testing uh, for another two weeks at least until we uh, adjust the positivity rates. Um, but I, I think throughout this, there's going to be um, constant needs to evolve and change uh, and make decisions that are best to, to keep the game you know, moving forward. Uh, and, and we'll continue to learn from you know, our errors, other leagues' errors, um, and I think that's something we definitely need to look at and definitely need to push for uh, is the continuation of, of everyday testing. And how do you feel about the penalties for off the field, whatever, violations, if you want to call it, you know, going to a club or going to a concert? Um, was that a difficult one to accept? Is it tough, you know, as union president to say we can be penalized for stuff we do outside of the building? Yeah, I mean, the, there's a there's a law aspect to it, a burden of proof and, and everything like that. but. Um, I think, again, it just speaks to the importance guys, guys don't want to get sick, uh, and guys don't want their families getting sick. So, um, that's also what the players want and they want to avoid, um, those risks, uh, and, and you have to accept, um, what other people are doing outside of the facility because that becomes your risk as well. Um, so I, I think guys were, were okay with, with having rules around, you know, keeping keeping them out of, of high risk environments um, because because guys don't want to get sick and guys don't want their families to get sick. Thanks. Great. We're at twelve thirty, so this is going to be our last question. We'll go to Mary Kay Cabot to close it out. Uh, JC, can can you address the the fact that uh, the Browns players that have opted out so far? are, uh, you know, the guys in the trenches, you know, the linemen, uh, you guys on the offensive line have, you know, been particularly hard hit with, uh, you know, three guys opting out. And then I saw something from Chad Thomas on Twitter where he talked about, um, you know, being in a high risk category and having some trepidation about playing. So my question to you is, uh, you know, how do you guys as, as the, you know, the, the, the big men, so to speak, on the team, uh, you know, how do you handle the fact that you guys are maybe in one or two high risk categories? And are you helping a guy like a, a Chad Thomas or some of these other linemen work through their concerns about playing this season? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I'm, I'm always open and I feel like I'm, I'm fairly easily approachable uh, about talking through anything guys need to talk through. Uh, and more importantly, I can get them in touch with the people they, they need to talk to on a medical perspective. Um, better, better than I could speak to. Um, so, so that's, a, that's the part where if, if anybody, you know, Browns or any team, 
um, feels like they, they're having you know, a tough time making the decision and just want to hear a, another perspective. Um, that I, I think they know they're, they're always uh, free to reach out to me and, and I can put them in, in touch with other people who can give them uh, a very solid uh, medical opinion uh, of what they're going through. Um, but again, this, this was about allowing guys to, to make a choice and make a choice of, of what's best for them and their families. And um, it's, it's not an easy decision either way. Um, and, and I'm glad it seems like guys are, are really taking it to heart and, and sitting back and, and weighing their options and, and making whatever decision is best for them. And, I, and I'm happy about that. And do you guys think that I mean, you feel you'll be okay on the offensive line? I mean, we don't know if you're going to lose another guy or two, but do you, do you think you guys will uh, be able to, you know, pull together and, and, and get through fielding a, a good offensive line in the wake of this? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be fine.